the venous blood returns to heart by which vessel by which blood vessel uh, from the gi tract from gi tract ivc huh? ivc ivc true yeah, yeah. Uh, but then related to the gi tract what is the vessel does the portal vein uh, return directly to the heart or does it go to the liver yeah. it goes to the liver so uh, how does the blood that contains all the food come to the heart it goes to the liver then from there how does it go what's the hepatic vein, vein. Hepatic vein. okay anything that is produced by the liver goes into the systemic circulation it goes back to the heart by the hepatic vein okay that's the first thing you need to know the next thing you need to know is all gi organs plus the spleen they do not directly go back to the heart okay they go to the liver so I'm uh, talking about this again, from the liver to the hepatic vein to the IVC. Okay, this is the pathway of venous return. This is the pathway of venous return. But there are areas where systemic and portal blood portal uh, vessels are connected. Let me explain this. There are areas where the systemic and the portal blood, sorry, portal blood vessels are connected. Now, let me draw a diagram. I'll explain this from the beginning. Don't worry. Okay, just draw this. I will explain from the beginning. If you didn't understand this, just don't worry. Don't draw what I'm going to draw now. Okay. Now, what is this portal system? Let's take a look at what this portal system is. The portal system is the blood vessels that come from the veins, the veins that come from all those arteries we talked about. We talked about three arteries, three major arteries, and the veins that come from these, they form the portal system. So there will be the esophageal veins, then the gastric veins, splenic veins, uh, all of these duodenal veins, all of these veins, they will all come back into the liver. Okay. It will all come back into the liver and from the liver, it will go back to the heart, to the normal systemic circulation through the hepatic vein. Okay. This is the normal system. However, you need to understand this thing. There are places, let's take the esophagus for example, this is the esophagus. There are places in which the systemic circulation and the portal circulation join. 
like this. There are places like this. Okay. But the blood never mixes. The blood never mixes. If this is the portal system, if, if this is the portal system, the blood in this will never mix with the systemic blood. Okay. Can someone try to guess why? Pressure difference, yes. Yes. What about the pressure difference? Is there a pressure difference or is there no pressure difference? Think and answer. No. No, there's no pressure difference. The pressure in these vessels, P here, let's take it as a value, let's take it as X. It will be the same pressure in the portal system. Okay. In normal patients, in normal patients, the pressure in the systemic circulation is going to be equal to the portal circulation. So the blood does not mix. Do you understand that? That's the, if you don't understand this, the rest will be confusing. Okay. You guys are free to ask me if you don't ask, I understand. Next, let's take a look at the locations where these connections are. So uh, there's this diagram. It took me a long time to draw this. Okay. I'll, uh, let's draw it again. I'll just draw it again. But then when it comes to labeling, I will use this diagram. Okay. Um, so let's draw it again. We have the liver. And it gives rise to three blood vessels that we need. The left gastric vein and one which is a remnant. In the sense, it was there when we were a baby, when we were a fetus, sorry, not a baby. And the other one, all the way to the rectum and the anus, to the rectum, okay? So let's label these. This is the left gastric vein. And this is the round ligament. Okay. Now, what is important here is this was where the umbilical, the umbilical vein used to be. This was where the umbilical vein used to be. Okay, and uh, where is the umbilical vein connected to our body? You have something called the umbilicus. Okay, you have something called the umbilicus over here. That's where the placenta connects through the umbilical cord to the uh, baby, to the fetus. Okay, so I'm going to draw the umbilicus here. Okay, and over here. I will just draw the stomach and the esophagus. Now, these are the most important portal vessels. Let's draw the systemic vessels. Uh, guys, draw a branch like this. Just draw a branch like this, okay? Just draw a branch like this. And adjacent to each other, but not touching. This is the superior rectal vein. Superior rectal vein.
Just draw this. This is called the epigastric vein. Okay. Uh, let's label these vessels. Oh, one more. It's, this is the azygous vein. So uh, when it comes to the esophagus, we have the azygous vein, which is from this systemic circulation, and the left gastric vein from the uh, portal system. Then we have this round ligament that used to be the umbilical vein. What you need to know is, it has the remnant of a lumen. It has the remnant of a lumen. What does this mean? It is patent that it can open up. Okay, what I'm trying to say is it can open up and blood can flow again. Okay, uh, I hope you guys know and understand that after you are born, this becomes a ligament and it becomes non-functional. There's no blood going through this, okay? However, it keeps that lumen, okay? The next thing is the superior rectal vein. And there's two more branches from the systemic circulation called middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein, okay? Now, let's take a look at what happens here. So I'm going back to this image, okay? This is the image I drew previously. Can someone tell me, now that you understood, there's going to be equal pressures here. What happens in portal hypertension? What happens in portal hypertension? Pressure in the portal wine increases. Pressure in the circulation is higher yes. than the... And then what happens? What will happen to the blood? Can you guys understand this? Now the pressure in the portal vein is greater than that of the systemic circulation. Okay. Pressure in the portal vein, portal hypertension, high blood pressure in the portal vein, portal vein pressure will be greater than the systemic pressure okay portal vein pressure will be greater than the systemic pressure and that will cause something like varicose veins look at this here this is due to portal hypertension affecting the esophagus the regions of the esophagus it will cause damage because these vessels will start to enlarge all these vessels will start to enlarge okay and when they enlarge Can someone tell me the name of this? When these vessels over here, they will enlarge like this. What do you call, call this condition? Esophageal when it's in the esophagus. Yes. It's called esophageal varices. And these vessels, they can enlarge and obstruct the lumen. It can obstruct the... Uh, wall okay look at how i drew a small hole here so it can come and obstruct the wall like this and sometimes due to the high pressure it can bleed okay these esophageal varices they can bleed and this is most of the time silent bleeding when i say silent bleeding the patient won't know it is bleeding okay so and this is life threatening
okay this is a life threatening condition in which the patient can bleed silently however sometimes there can be a vomiting of blood bright red blood can come out sometimes but most often it is silent bleeding because some there's gravity it goes downwards okay it goes to the stomach then this peristalsis it will move the blood downwards how do these patients present if there is severe bleeding what's the sign have you heard of something like this uh, basically black tarry stools because there's blood it can cause black tarry stool okay the blood is going to be processed it is not going to be bright red blood okay this is processed blood the blood will be broken down i need to highlight the importance of this because we are going to come to something over here okay when there's bleeding somewhere here it is not going to be processed by the enzymes it's just going to come out okay black tarry stools so hematemesis is not common is it hematemesis can also occur that is throwing up blood okay it can occur there are patients who present with that it's not uncommon but the problem is the the life threatening problem here is the silent bleeding or the severe bleeding which presents with black tar stools okay let's just write hematemesis that is throwing up blood okay that's the first part the second part is now that the portal pressure is increased it is also going to open up this lumen okay it is going to open up this lumen and then it is also going to cause blood to flow into this region it will cause blood to flow into this region okay and they become dilated they become like a varicose vein what do you call this condition when there is this uh, exactly okay acute medusa now this is not my chapter portal hypertension is i think it's sasangas he will discuss these he will go into more detail caput medusa reason it looks like the head of medusa okay you know medusa the greek lady the scary lady with the uh, hair that has snakes caput medusa okay Do you guys understand this? It's not hard. Okay? But then uh, it was one of the hardest for me uh, back in the day. And finally, let's talk about a condition called hemorrhoids. Okay? Hemorrhoids. Pressure increases, goes here, dilates these veins. There's going to be dilation of these. okay and they can bleed so the pressure will increase cause dilation these can bleed hemorrhoids okay so uh, let me just go into a bit more detail about these varicoses varicoses is a condition in which the blood vessels the veins become torturous they become twisted turned like this it is more common in the legs and it is more common in females okay 
normally the vein is supposed to go up like this in a smooth even if it turns it has to go in a smooth turn there are valves but varicosities are torturous tortured basically tortured veins okay bleed hemorrhoids do you know the difference between internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids uh, don't write this we'll uh, discuss this internal and external pectineal With, line. Huh? sorry if it's outside the pectineal line it's, uh, yes pectinate line yes it is external now which one causes pain there's two types of hemorrhoids hemorrhoids one is painful the other one is painless which type causes pain internal actually it's just, mm -hmm. i like in all of these uh this causes okay i wrote the same thing here uh, this is painful this is painless okay 